You need silicon and oxygen, and yeah. that's all you need. It is abundant, but this is another example of the immense variety the Earth forms in very crazy ways. Oh, yeah. Did you ever do show and tell when you were in school? I hated show and tell. It, it's stressful. It's like you have a lot of things that you love in your life, and some of them are like personal that I, I don't want to share with everyone. No, I so. get that. I know we're both collectors, yes. and I'm about to poke the collector gene. Uh, <laughs> so this is definitely going to be a show and tell of some pieces from my collection, and uh, it might wind up inspiring you to start your own. So, here we go. Crystals rock. Especially rock crystals. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. So what we're starting off with here is just a very classical smoky quartz. When you think of quartz, you're looking at those prism faces and those pyramidal terminations and that six-sided crystal there. Yeah, but this little broken end, it's like a hexagon inside a hexagon. Mm -hmm. I think what's happened there is there were some areas where it dissolved and then recrystallized. What I wanted to start off with here is the very classic shape of quartz. You know, this is what 99.9% .9 of people envision in their head when they think of quartz but we're gonna be looking at a lot of different growth habits of quartz. So I'm gonna really rapid fire uh, okay. this time. I'm just gonna show you mind-blowingly different amounts of Love quartz. Love it. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm not looking. This one actually Ooh, is oh a little bit similar in shape. You notice it's got these really great terminations going on here. So this is a Dauphine Law twin. Okay, so explain what a Dauphine twin is. So a lot of the times you have quartzes that are grown like left-handed and right-handed quartzes in a grown. A Dauphine is where you basically have right-handed and left-handed only. The twins here is where they've intergrown together. You can tell by the really, really crazy terminations. So you have two crystals that are interpenetrated and grown out of one base. I love that. It kind of looks like a castle. You know how like they, oh, they yeah. have just different tiers? I love that. It's so pretty. Now we're going to look at another kind of twin. So this uh, one is a Japan a Law Twin. tabular. These are very, very collectible and really fun. This one's from Peru. In a Japan Law Twin, the C-axis of the crystals, and the C-axis is basically an imaginary line running down the direction of growth of the crystal from base to tip, meet at 84 degrees and 33 minutes is what the is angle. 33 minutes. The 33 is basically a measurement of a fraction of a degree. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love that. It's like a little check mark. Yes, it is. <laughs> so just to clarify, a law is something that we've confirmed. This is definitely how it happens. This is pretty set in stone, but there are other rules. <laughs> oh. Set in stone. <laughs> Pun Sorry. intended. <laughs> but there are other rules out there where it's like, I think it happens this way, but we're not entirely positive. Yeah, so a lot of the times when you're talking about habits, you know, it tends to grow this way, but laws are, if it is this angle and this type of growth, you know, that is the way it is. Okay. Yeah. So another little tiny unboxing here. So oh my here goodness. we have a combination of things going on. We actually have Japan Law Quartz, and you know what it's done on the top there? I would be royally impressed if you knew it. I don't know what that is. So when you have a quartz growing and then it grows out and then back into a termination, it's called a scepter. A scepter. Yeah, a scepter. Love so it. you've got a couple of neat little things going on there. It's kind of frosted at the bottom and then it's so much, much clearer, yeah. What that means when you see the growth like that, usually when it was forming, you wind up getting faster crystal growth in those lower clarity areas and then when the growth has slowed down, you get much sharper, cleaner, right. clearer crystals there, which is of course why it's more rare. Yeah. Very cool. So the next one will make you say Hallelujah. <laughs> so this that's is a scepter. Yes, that's okay. a scepter and it's specifically from Hallelujah Junction, a area that's very famous for some really amazing scepters and wands and things out there. This is a really big scepter, oh, yeah. especially comparing to the little one. <laughs> to the little teeny tiny one. You can actually go out to Hallelujah Junction and you know, of course you have to pay. There's a fee, but they will help you dig your own. I've had friends who've gone out there and just about able to fill up an entire case. Oh my gosh. It's a really, really fun spot to go dig. 
I love that. And I mean, quartz is super common, but these are collector's pieces. Yes, and that's the thing is quartz is a very common mineral, but it becomes very collectible when you start getting into the really finer varieties. This one is from Africa. Oh and my so gosh. this one I thought was just incredibly, incredibly unusual. What you have here is a quartz crystal that grew and then was covered with iron. So it's got a little layer of iron over right. the top of it that's giving it that pink look. And now that there was iron in the environment, you had another crystal grow on and you can see just a little hint of purple, purple. there. It's the presence of iron and trace amounts in the quartz crystal with a little, little touch of radiation is what gives yeah. it that purple color. And so you had that amethyst sceptered out on the top there. I love that. <laughs> really, I think really that really is cool adorable. Piece. It's one of my favorite little crystals. I love it when you can just see the geology yes. in a specimen. It tells a story for sure. Are you hungry for more quartz? I'm always hungry. All right, here is a uh, quartz that is grown in a food termed habit. Is there any particular food that this makes you uh, think of? Artichoke? Yes, nailed it, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, this is artichoke a- Artichoke habit, I have never heard of that. Yeah, this is an artichoke habit. Sometimes it's called sprouting quartz. So in this situation, you had quartz crystals that were growing, and then you had additional quartz uh, crystals start to grow off of the prism faces. And they usually deviate a little bit out. So you can see they're kind of tilting out and surrounding it. This one is a very interesting one too, because it has little tiny starfish looking yeah inclusions in it of uh, a mineral called hollandite. We'll try to get a close up on the hollandite inclusions because yeah. those are really cool. They're really neat. You will see it in other mineral varieties, but quartz is the most common variety to sprout, to have crystals radiating out from a central growth. Now I'm gonna show you an extreme variety of the radiating form. Okay. Just absolutely crazy what's going on here. So in this little guy, Whoa. In this situation, you had quartzes growing in two different directions and they yeah. just started deviating yeah. off at all sorts of angles. This thing is radiating out in almost every direction. Yeah, that's amazing. And there's even a little hint of like a oh. gunmetal blue color in the middle, which is really, really unusual to see in quartz. Oh yeah, that's the first thing I noticed actually. The blue in the center and then it kind of gets lighter. Super, it reminds me of a dumbbell a little bit. It does, or a bow tie. Uh, well, yeah, or a bow. Here, we oh. have a really fun one. So this, candy. yeah, <laughs> it looks like rock, rock candy. Candy. On this one, what we had was a base where there was a slag type form and then quartz started growing on the top of it and it's grown out in this druzy or small little crystal form that has just coated it in all different directions. Can you think of a large plant that that kind of looks like? It'd look a little bit more like it if it had a couple of arms like this. Oh, a cactus? Yeah, so sometimes those little guys are called cactus quartz, especially if they have more radiating off from them or they're called spirit quartz. Very hefty. Oh yeah, you know, that's a solid piece right there. How fun is that? At first, mm -hmm. the large castle looking one was my favorite. Mm -hmm. And then the, the bicolored one was my favorite. Mm -hmm. And then the bow tie <laughs> was my favorite. I just can't pick a favorite. So, not only with quartz, oh. you also see it with nice purple amethyst. I love that. This one, I don't believe, has really grown around a stalactite as much as that one has. This one, you see very distinctly terminated quartzes at the end. So in this situation, you had quartz growing and then after the quartz grew, it grew druzy around there, but left this top exposed. And these are ones that, you know, often are still called spirit quartz or cactus quartz. So in keeping with the whole cactus thing, uh, one of the things that cacti can have are... Needles. And the really pretty ones. Oh, flowers. Yes. So here Aww. we have a flower. Oh, that's so pretty. There's usually chlorite associated with a lot of these. That's where the green is yeah. uh, coming from here. But yeah, it's radiated out in all sorts of different directions, just giving it a very chrysanthemum or flower-like appearance. Here, we have a gvindel. A what? 
Gwindel, G-W-I-N-D-E-L, oh. Gwindel or Gwindel. Oh, German? Uh, yes, and a lot of these you'll find in the Alps is a quartz in which the crystal has twisted as it's grown. And these can also be left-handed or right-handed or clockwise, counterclockwise, depending on the way you're looking at it. Yeah, that twist is just so I love that. That's so, so cool. fun. With the way that these grow, there is some conjecture. Some people, you know, assume that it's like, well, it's motion, you know, that's happened as it grows. But it's quite possible that in the environment you've got something electrically happen that causes that axis to yeah. shift off that way and, and twist around. Here's a smaller one here. If you'll hold these up together, you'll notice they are open Grindles, where you see the termination points, and there are closed Grindles, huh. where it's all one flat crystal from side to side. Right. This one is uh, also covered in chloride. Right. So this kind of relates to the flower we were yeah. talking about. Chloride is often associated with quartz. So you said most of these are found in the Alps in mm -hmm. Switzerland. Are mm -hmm. these considered rare or? They are definitely a rarity. They are not so rare that it's difficult to get one at an affordable price, but the bigger they are, the stronger the twist they are, the more rare they become and the finer qualities in there and the price, you know, starts Got climbing it. up. The horizontal striations in these are pretty cool because yeah. you can see the ones on the opposite oh, yeah. side of the crystal. Mm -hmm. Again, with the Gwindle, we're talking about some people thought, you know, maybe it was motion that was causing that right. instead of just like electrical. So here is a situation where you can see the motion. So this is called a Fodden. And you have two twin crystals that just grew side by side here. But that line yeah. of uh, kind of milky color that's going right through the center is where the ground is like literally moving. And so that's causing that line to form right through there. And I love this one because the yeah. line's going through multiple yeah. quartzes. That is fun. That's yeah. a really fun piece. So this is also Swiss. This is called a Tessin habit. I'm gonna to try to reflect the light there so you guys can see. In a Tessin oh. habit, you have from the base, it's basically terminating up in one big pyramidal, but it, it's alternating. So you have the prism faces, the flat faces, right. and the, the pyramidal faces intergrowing. So it's really going flat right. in, flat in, flat in, flat in, stepping all the way up to this termination point. And this one does it so so gradually that oh when, when you reflect it in the light, you can see the little flat areas in the stepping. Do you want to give the viewers a quick definition of a prism face versus a pyramidal face? Yes. So going back to our original crystal, these would be the prism faces and these are the pyramidal terminations here. So in the Tessin, what we're seeing is alternating prism faces and these pyramidal faces all the way up to the top and doing it so gradually that it just looks like one big long pyramidal termination. Yeah, that's Elongated. pretty cool. They're that's, really fun. That takes a good eye to see. Oh yeah. Here we have a Cumberland habit. Sometimes it's also called a beta quartz. Okay. What you have here is you have almost nothing Right. in the way of the prism faces. All you have is the pyramidal terminations here and there. Why they call them beta quartz, there is a variety of quartz that forms at much higher temperatures and has a form very similar to this, and they think that this crystal has formed way down deep. And as it's come up, it's converted from beta quartz into the variety of quartz that is more stable at the surface and retained its form or pseudomorphed. Oh. So a pseudomorph is where one mineral replaces the other. Sometimes it can be like literally quartz after quartz in right. this situation. The first thing that I notice is the luster. It looks mm -hmm. very watery. Mm -hmm. Since we were talking about pseudomorphs, I've got yes. uh, an actual legit pseudomorph to show cool. you. This is a really, really fun one. This is a mineral called anhydrite which is without uh, water. Yes, <laughs> without water. And uh, one of the it things- It looks parched. Yes, uh, one of the things with anhydrite is it can actually be destroyed if you get it wet. It's water soluble, basically. Oh, and so what's happened here, the hot thermal silica water came through, penetrated this anhydrite and started dissolving it and it replaced it with quartz. So these are all now quartz crystals, but they've retained the outer form of the anhydrites that they replaced on a molecular level. So this is quartz pseudomorphed after anhydrite. How fun nice is that? Nice little jersey on that. That one is, this one's really fun. I so love this fun. little piece. So here we have a pseudomorph. Yeah. Here we have an epimorph. This oh is one gosh. of my favorite specimens of all. We have a crystal that grew 
possibly a calcite, possibly a dolomite, there's several things that it could be, was coated with a thin layer of quartz that started growing, and then there was just a little area that it didn't cover here. Right. And it completely dissolved the original crystal away, so this entire crystal is completely hollow. Hollow, yeah. Yes. You can see right down inside it. It's uh, gone. It's gone. <laughs> You don't find that every day. No, no, that that one's one of my one of my babies. So I've given you a whole lot to consider if you ever want to do a, a quartz collection. Yes. What would you want our viewers to take a closer look at? Oh my gosh, I already told you I kept picking new favorites. <laughs> I have to say, I really like the bow tie. I love the different color zoning. I love the overall shape. It's kind of like icy and cool. Thanks, Christopher, for coming on the show, showing us your amazing collection. I learned a lot, for sure. It's been the funnest show and tell that I've ever done. <laughs> and uh, so please let me know in the comments what your favorite was. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And we'll see you here for future show and tells on unboxing.